Okay, folks, we're back from my little hiatus. Um, you were hoping we were going to leave. Going to jump right back into things. Um, Dwayne. Yeah. A um, couple of people have mentioned to me that uh, they really enjoyed our show about what we had been reading. Okay. And they said, w when are you going to do that again and tell us more about some of the good books that you read? So we ought to plug that in. Uh, I don't think the whole two hours should be that. No. But maybe we can do half a show or sure. something like that on. Yeah. Um, so we ought to put that into our uh, thinking. Uh. Now. I miss Mad Magazine. <laughs> <laughs> I used to read that when I, I was a too. kid. <laughs> I, every, I would wait for the new issue to come out and get it right away. Do you remember when that came out? It was a comic book. Yeah, yeah, it was. That was it. Was great. There was another one called Cracked. They Cracked. Tr they tried yep. to try tried to imitate, they but they could, never could kind of get to couldn't it. Couldn't do it. No, and uh, I'll tell you, I, I hadn't seen Mad Magazine for years, and then I switched dentists. We moved over <laughs> here, and I got to give Joel Perlman down there at by the Lafayette House a plug. He had, prior to the, the pandemic, he had the best magazine assortment I have ever seen in a doctor's office or a dentist's office or anything. They must have had 30 different magazines all the time, wow. and all the current ones to all the wow. time. And you know what he had? Mad. Mad. I looked at that and I said, oh my God, I haven't seen that magazine in 20 years. I don't know if it's still around or not. Oh, it is. Uh, it is. Alfred, I don't think it's as popular. Alfred E. As Newman was. was still yeah. still there. What me worry? Yep. What me worry is yep. right. Uh, I I looked forward to that stupid magazine no, every month. I'll tell you, yeah. and I uh, absorbed it. That was uh, a lot of bathroom reading. Oh yeah, yeah. That, that, that used to get read cover to cover. Cover to cover. And I'd show Monica something like this. That is so stupid. What do you see? I, that I know, I know. I'm married to the same woman. Oh, she um, I got one thing, and then I'm going to deal with something big. One thing is this morning's Boston Herald. Okay. Upwards of 800k eyed to spruce up old Norfolk prison for migrants. I guess we're going to throw another 800 thou at this? Apparently, and it's only supposed to be good for, what, 6 to 12 months? Yep. And then what? Then what's going to sit there and deteriorate like it had before? Old prison gets a mass makeover. I haven't read the article. Mm -hmm. Then I, I just scanned this to see if anything jumped out at me. And something jumped out at me. Ah, phooey, I went by it. The editorial page. The lead editorial. Norfolk Prison Migrant Shelter should become senior housing. So, if we are to believe Maura Healy, this is just a short-term fix and they're all going. It should be converted to senior housing. And you know what? That's a great idea. There's nothing wrong with that. But we know that the waiting list now, by the way, Senior housing up in Franklin. Now, Franklin's five times the size of Norfolk, or yeah, four okay, and a half yeah. times. They've got a thousand people on the waiting list for senior housing. Senior housing? Yeah. I don't know what it is here in Norfolk, but it's not that much. But it's still, you know, there's plenty of people looking for I, senior housing. Oh, yeah. I, I think that's that's been a problem wherever. Yeah. This morning, I went to the post office for the first time in, 
Oh, probably three or four years. Three really? Years. I way, go way every, before, every day. I, I don't. I, because Monica goes to the senior center all the time. Mm -hmm. If I got something to mail, I say, here, drop this off. Or put, put. So I have an aunt that's your birthday is now. We're coming up. She's 99 years old. Spry, sharp. So, and she has a, a vision problem. That's the only problem is she complains that I can't read. Well, I can't see anymore. So I'm thinking about it, thinking about it. And she said, I said, you know, one of my companies before, we made, uh, or we made, we, I sold, they, they made in Switzerland something called an Optivisor. It looks sort of like a, a welder's mask. Goes around your okay. thing. But it's got little lenses here Goggles? that you can change. Yeah. Little square lenses. And uh, technicians use them. Jewelers use them. Like if they're watchmakers and stuff okay. to get in to see all that. I said, you know, they can, you could use those to read. In fact, I gave up set to my mother. She used to do real intricate uh, needlepoint. And uh, her eyes would start getting tired from it. So I gave Fuzzy. her. Gave her an, I, I, I bought a lower set of lenses in it because you've got a whole set of lenses that you can change. And I thought, I bet she would use one of those. So yesterday I went up in the attic. Oh my God, was it hot up there. And I said, I know I got stuff stored up here. And sure enough, I had a, another set of those Optivisor. So I boxed it all up and I took it to the library, or the library, yeah, yeah, yeah. the post office this morning. I said, yeah, I'm, I'm getting turned into Biden. Um, the post office. No, it was a priority. All thing I had was those priority boxes, priority mailboxes. So I said, "Yeah, I probably should ship it priority." When you're 99 years old, you don't want to, you don't want to wait too long. You don't want to tempt fate. So I went in there and I, I pulled out. She, I said, the mail list. She says, "Okay." And there, there was nobody in there. She's very friendly, nice lady. And uh, I had a $10 bill, and she said, it "Got up home, comes up." $14.80. I go, oh my God, I, I was shocked. I go, well, I guess I can put that 10 back in my pocket and blow up my credit card. I had no idea. For some reason, now I'm going to get laughed at when I go home and tell her. For some reason, I thought it was going to be probably 5 maybe $6. You know, uh, the postal rates have gone up. I, I found out. Yes. Uh, and not just the stamps on the letters, the packages have gone up That's big what, time. Yeah. I said, I didn't know that. Yeah. I was shocked. Yeah. Um, another thing I noticed, they close from 12.30 to 1.30. For lunch. Now, CVS does that too. So they can, the people work behind it, and the yep. pharmacy can, but they close at one thirty to 2. Yep. They recognize that most everybody has 12 to 1 for a lunch hour. Right. And they need to be able to accommodate people on their well, lunch the, hour. Yeah, but the post office, they close during the busy lunch hour. Now, we are a sub post office. Of Millis, I of think. Of Millis. Yep. Millis made that rule. Okay. So. But I, I thought, why? Why? I didn't say nothing. Yeah. Why not? Why? One o'clock to one third, one to two. Do you know what's really funny? Is I go up to get the mail every day. Oh, yeah. It's just. Oh, you got a post office box. Yeah. yeah. And to listen to people come or walk to the door and go, Yeah, what the hell is going on? What the hell's going on, on here? And say, Well, read the sign there. It's closed from 12 30 to 1 30 for lunch. Whose goddamn idea was this? <laughs> it's not a popular time frame. No, I, I could see just what what's the difference if we move to one to two? You yeah. know that. At least give the the guy that's got the hour for lunch that has to run right. over there. Give him the whole hour. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Oh, well, that Dwayne, was just one of if those only you did listen to us more closely. Bill, the whole world would have been better off. <gasps> but nobody listens to us. Nobody listens. No. Well, Dwayne, I think that of all the things that we have tackled on the show, we're about to tackle the most important. What could that be? I have before me 
the Republican platform. Now, I've been told, not by Donald Trump, but by one of his senior aides, that if we object to anything or see something wrong, we're to speak up. Oh, sure. So this is all just one sentence things. Okay. Number one, seal the border and stop the migrant invasion. Agree. Number two, carry out the largest deportation in U.S. history. Agree, but impossible. Yep. I, uh, agreed, and if he can do it, then I'll tell you what, he walks on water. That's right. Three, end inflation and make America affordable again. Well, yes, but you've got to stop your, your protective tariffs, you're going to do that. Yep. When you put a 10% or a 20% or a 30% tariff, that goes right into the cost of the goods, which quite raises the price, which causes the which adds yep. to the inflation. Let's, you can't do both. Let's hope that the people that are going to implement this uh, have got this figured out. Okay. This is going to require quite a balancing act. Well, it's going to require more than that. Make America the dominant energy producer in the world. Already are. Last month, we were turning out 13.8 yeah. billion barrels a, mo a month. Yeah. The most we've ever turned out was 13.2 at one point. Yeah. We, are, we already are. We just can't process it. We can't process it. And the Biden administration has taken blocks of off the open territory and yeah. closed them off and said you can't go in there. But on the other hand, the last bid went unbid. Yeah. There was vast sections of oil company says, nope, I'm not bidding on that anymore. There's two, it's and, too iffy. And I, you got, I can understand well, that. Well, they don't know where the hell the, they're going to be. The, exactly. Yep. You know, uh, the uh, if we commit to this yeah. and the EPA starts rewriting exactly. the regulations, and we're, we're sitting with a very expensive but worthless piece of land yep. that, that, or property that so we, we can't use. So we need continuity. That's right. I'll put that in my notes to Donald. And I still... I, I might be totally wrong, but I, I doubt that. Well, I I bet wrong once. Once? Yeah, I thought I was wrong, but I wasn't. Uh, <laughs> Good. <laughs> <laughs> she hates that when I tell her. Yeah. Um, I can't believe that today the scientific community, if they went all out on it like a Project Manhattan or uh, any of these big projects, you couldn't overcome the pollution aspect of things like oil or coal. I think today with the uh, nuclear physics that's available, because you can change the, the basic nuclear structure on things and make them something they're not, something that they don't yeah. even exist anymore. Now, I don't claim to be that. I, no, I, I had no. one physics class in college, <laughs> and it was physics for business students. So you can imagine. It was sort of a forgettable class. Oh, it was a great class. But he said, well, you learn the theories of how it does. You don't have to do the math. I think, oh, my God, because we couldn't do the math anyway. Yeah. But yeah. Well, you know what, Dwayne? Uh, you and I have agreed on just about every important issue, I think, mm -hmm. in the 12 or 15 years we've been doing this. I couldn't agree with you more on this. I look at the pollution problems, what's going up the stack, mm -hmm. and I'm saying, I know it would cost money. I know that. But once we do it and conquer this, yeah. it's going to become a much better world. And that is, it's got to be. You've got to be able to capture that stuff. You can. I just saw that again a, a month ago or so. On, uh, I, if I watch news, I like that 6.30 Channel 5 or ABC's, I forgot his name. They have some real good stuff other than news. And they showed this place that they were capturing the CO2 out of this plant and somehow burying it. 
and I, they got capability of taking this. They take the CO2 completely out. And so it is possible. Right now it's probably not financially feasible, but it is possible. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, it, it, there's got to be beady-eyed little scientists tucked yep. away someplace yep. that if you challenged them and said, look, here's a five-year project for you. You've got to solve this. It, assemble a team. Mm -hmm. it's, here's massive computers. Go to it. Yeah, I, I see. I don't. I don't buy this that that it's as dirty as it is, and you can't be anything done with it. That's not true. Right. Um, uh, you know what else too? I don't believe. Um, now, we are experiencing some global warming. Well, I think. Yeah. The seasons have changed, but yet we have the climate people screaming, Henny Penny, the sky is falling. And when you look at all their numbers, we're talking about two one-hundredths of a degree change by the year 2200. Uh, I see what you're saying. And it or looks two, very 2, small. But you got to remember that when we're talking earth sciences, you're talking eons, thousands of years. We're not talking 10 years, five years and stuff. Uh, a tenth of a degree of Celsius could be disastrous two mm. year, 200 years from now. We don't know what's gonna happen. And it may be, it may go like this and then it, eventually it just keeps getting higher and higher. Um, I, I'm not sure what, what's happening but it, it's definitely you can it, it, just the surface evidence is that it's getting warmer but and yet it has been warm in the past and yet as few as 400 years ago we mm -hmm. had a mini ice age mini ice age exactly yeah and we had another one about 1200 years ago yeah and they're saying we may have another one another two or three hundred years yeah yeah. I mean, that that's a normal normal cycle. You got to remember too, the Earth does not stay static as we think it is. Well, we, to us it is because we only here for a very very short time oh, yeah. in, in the scope of things. But don't forget, the North Pole at one time was tropic. Of course, that's why you got oil. <laughs> you, you know, had dinosaurs and you had jungle yeah. and, and you Tarzan know. swinging around and and, and then. We try to solve problems, and we make things worse. Yeah, we can. Okay, do you remember the the uh, the big controversy thirty years ago or so about the um, indigenous people of far northern Canada? Yeah, they would slaughter the baby seals and oh, yeah. skin yeah, them. Yeah, you don't hear that about that anymore. They well, they stopped it. Okay. Guess what happened? What well, the ste seals overpopulated and wiped out the fisheries. And yeah, the you, you can't screw around with these things. Yeah. Huh? Oh, that's been a, there's there's so many of those cases. Yeah. Ask a Floridian today about alligators. We oh. were we were almost out of alligators. All of a sudden, they just clamped down. You got to treat alligators as national assets. Ask now we're up to our ass in alligators. Ask ranches out west yeah. about wolves. Wolves, yeah. yeah, that's another thing. That's another experiment that is we're really bring, bring not in, quite bringing in Kodiaks out. there, places that they never were. Yeah, yeah. These guys are, why do I want to bring something that's going to kill me? Yeah, well, oh, Indiana never had them. Oh, well, no. but yeah, but let's put them in Indiana anyway. Yeah. Oh, it's, it's crazy. It's just, it's nuts. Oh. Um, the, uh, Oh, I just read it too. Well, this old old brain don't remember stuff that much. There was one bird is killing another bird. Both of them are on the endangered species list. 
They, they claim the chickadees. Um, they're about, they're down way yeah, down. Yeah, way down, and they're going to be extinct in yeah. 40 or 50 years. I don't have many chickadees left. I got a couple. Yeah, I got a yeah. half a dozen maybe showing yeah. up. Number five, stop outsourcing and turn the U.S. into a manufacturing superpower. Agree. There's no reason to outsource other than financial. That's right. Or there's no reason to outsource unless you're dealing with a finite natural resource that occurs in a certain well, of part course, of the yeah. world. And, it and makes you don't have it. Just... Total but even sense. if it's finite and very rare, then you want to use, you always want to use, if it's limited, absolute limited, and there's no more, don't use your own first. No, you want to use, use his. his first. Yeah. Large cut, large tax cuts for workers and no tax on tips. I don't know. On tax on tips, I'll start with that one. Uh, I think you're... It's very, very popular, the tip people, and you can gather, gather some votes with it. But you're taking, uh, I, don't, I don't, see, I don't know the percentage of the people that are, would fall into that. But well, you, waiters, you're, you're opening up a, you, you, you know they're not paying the proper amount of, of course tax not, anyway. But they're paying something. They yeah. used to pay, are they not? That's it, yeah. Uh, I, I don't know. I, I uh, don't, you know what? This whole system works. I don't think we really need to tip the barrel over. No, just leave it. That's nothing. Yeah, just leave it the way it is. Or they probably got a 25, 30 percent tax rate now. Yeah. Of, what, of what's being char what's being claimed. Yeah. And just leave it alone. It's not. Yeah. yeah but I go for tax cuts for the working class. Yeah. Uh, when we have instant billionaires yeah. um, we need to pay the uh, workers that make the country go defend our constitution and bill of rights in our fundamental freedoms including freedom of speech religion and the right to bear arms that's a big that's a big pot right there that you freedom of speech religion yeah, no problem there. And the right to bear arms. Some questions there. Uh-oh, got some questions? Yeah. Okay. Trump almost got killed with a two thirty three caliber rifle. They would have blown his head right off. Yeah, would have. Yeah. Absolutely, no question about it. There's no reason for anybody to own one of them. None whatsoever. An assault weapon. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's a dangerous thing. It's, it's very dangerous. And um, I don't think I see. I'm, I'm not for taking of a way somebody's 308 deer rifle or 30 no, 30 or, or double barrel shotgun. No, no, of course not. Or bird gun or. But when you take something that has no hunting value whatsoever, except the, it, it's a, it's what it is. It is. There's no reason. It's a no killing reason, machine. Yeah, there's no reason to have it. No, no, and, I agree. Uh, and, and I'm and a big. I'd, I, another thing, I, I am very concerned about of uh, these open to carry states that have no restrictions whatsoever. You, I would not want my kids going to a movie in a theater that has got these rowdy kids running around and they're all half of them are packing 40 caliber or nine millimeters. You know damn well they're going to get mad and shoot somebody. They do it all the time. Yeah. I don't want my kids in there on that. I've got clips of, um, from the Herald of 14-year-old arrested, and it shows the gun, the ammo, yeah. the two clips he was packing. You know goddamn well he's got no, no, con no common sense whatsoever. None. He None at all. He pissed me off, so I blew him away. Yeah, man. He dissed me. He dissed me. Yeah. yeah. I, I mean, well, he stole my... Uh, uh, drugs and yeah, all this crap. Whatever, it? But it, it, tell me in a rational society what a 14 year old is doing with a 762 automatic pistol yeah. and two clips. That's to, a, 36 rounds he's walking around with. It's just up to no good. That's, 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 
it can't, nothing good can come of that. No, there's no lions or tigers or savage no. animals prowling around Boston. North Korea is not ready to invade no. and he's going to protect uh, Dorchester or wherever he lives. It's absolutely incredible, but yet it's not the child's fault, it's society's fault. I know, it's... it's well, so we're not blaming. Uh, we don't have uh, Bill. I, we just don't have an answer right now for that. No, we don't. Stuff. The genie's out of the bottle, and we're not sure how to put it back. Yep. Uh, number eight. Yep. Prevent World War Three. Restore peace in Europe and the Middle East, and build an Iron Dome system to protect America. Probably mm -hmm. North America. Probably throw Canada. Yeah, under well, of course that too. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, I, I, yeah, absolutely. Yep. And I, I think today what what we see going on in Europe, we got the everybody. The one side's got to stand against the other side because Putin's a madman. He is. He's a, he he's is. An absolutely madman. And you got a madman in Iran. Yeah, and a madman in North Korea. Oh. Oh my God. You know why? Someone hasn't decided to take him out in Which North, one, North Korea. Korea. Yeah, uh, you know I, I've asked that myself, yeah. and I, I often said, what, as as far-reaching as our, for the lack of a better term, I'm going to call it intelligence services, reach and what they can do. I'm not sure why they can't get into into North Korea. And you can't, you, but you can't go in there and blatantly shoot the guy in the head. He's got to die of some natural causes that can't be can't be traced. You know. Well, him and her both. Well, yeah, they. His both sister got, is. She's worse. She's worse. Yeah, she's worse. She she has no common. She None. has no restraint whatsoever. But they could destable. World peace, yeah, single-handed. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. We need to do something about that. End the weaponization of the government against the people of our country. Agree. Yep. Um, I'm yep, ashamed yep. of the FBI. Never should a uh, organization be used against the uh, individuals for right for. for Except for uh, if they're crooks, they yeah. should be going after the them. The IRS is another one. Oh, that, they, that's, that, that, that's been for years, yeah. forever. Uh, but they used the hammer for a yeah. threat. Uh, that's bad, bad news. And both sides of it, both sides have done that. Yeah. Uh, that, that's been forever. Yeah. You, you don't like it? Well, you're going to be audited. Well, that's you, right. You, yeah, we'll you fix you. You don't like it? I can, I can get you a warrant for you that you can't get out of. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Stop migrant crime epidemic. Demolish foreign drug cartels. Now crush gang violence and lock up violent offenders. Yep. All that sounds good. I don't know how the hell how you, you do, it? do it. <laughs> the, if you could if you could get rid of the well, the problem is this is like a snake with the the cartels, for example, yeah. if you could automatically today somehow go in there and just annihilate them, get rid of them, within 30 days there'd be another group. That's right. Because it happens. They, they shoot each other, they kill the leaders and stuff, and they, they dissolve, and zoom, it's like a vacuum, and immediately they are. The difference is you've got to stop the demand. As right. long as there's a demand, and I'm not saying just here, but Europe is becoming a big demand for certain drugs now. As long as that, that incentive's there, it's going to continue. Cause but, but, but Dwayne, Mary Jane and I just use that stuff on the weekends for just a little high. We're not the bad guys. No, they're not. No, but the bad guys, are the ones that are selling it to them. Yes, that's right. And that's what you got to stop. You got to stop the demand, and you're you absolutely stop the right. Demand. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, it may call for intrusive policing. You, Bill, you, 
vices have a way of evading yeah. authorities. I know. They always have, whether it be alcohol, drugs, uh, prostitute. It doesn't matter what it is. If it's, it's a vice, they're going to find their way around, around it. Around it, yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm not sure what the answer is. D the aim, I'm 100% in favor of. Yeah. But how the hell we get there is... Well, I see, I, I, I kind of like some of the Scandinavians' idea about drugs. No, I'm not talking uh, spice or marijuana. So I'm talking about the hard, addictive drugs. There, for example, you don't. They don't have much of a problem in in Sweden, Norway. If you if you're an addict, you register with the government. You can get whatever you want from them, for cheap or nothing. There's no incentive for a guy, a, a pusher or a dealer to go into there and mm. sell it because, hell, the government's going to undercut you anyway. Yep. So they don't bother going in there. You, you can, it's like flooding the market. You know, and you say, well, gee, the, but the poor addict now, he's going to die from Well, he's going to die from it anyway. Right. You know, you, if you can educate him to stop, you can educate him to stop. If you can't, write him off. That's it. One of the cop shows, the live ones, I was on patrol, I think, or mm -hmm. whatever, uh, they had a blip on. Uh, they went and they would knock in and brought back an OD um, okay, yeah. victim. And um, the, one of the cops says, night before last I OD. Uh, I, I saw I, that I knock one. In. Yeah. No, one of them said, well, we did that this morning. Yeah. yeah. And, yeah. and then... The addendum a couple of weeks later, they they I said uh, he finally died. Yeah, yeah. Nar OD'd. Narcan is a two as far as contributing or, or or solving the problem. It's a two-edged sword. It's yeah, right. It does save lives. Those, but it also puts them in certain people in jeopardy, yeah. because now the the mindset is, you know, I think Narcan. I can do what I want if I OD. Somebody's going to save my ass. As long as somebody's uh, around that has Narcan and is willing to and do it. Now you're going to be able to buy it at CVS. Yeah. And carry it in your pocket with a little but sign. I got here's, Narcan. Here's the problem that I see is, um, well, you had the Narcan, but you didn't use it properly, and my brother died. Well, we're suing you. Of course. That's, that's a lawyer problem again. Boy. Um, the the other side of the coin is to clamp down on drug dealers. Yeah. Now the Philippines did. You know, it was a death sentence for anybody. Uh, uh, it's practically a death sentence in most of the Muslim countries. Yeah. Do we want to go that way, or do we? What we can't do is continue what we're doing. Right. We cannot continue to arrest. A drug dealer, a serious drug dealer that's dealing in in serious hard stuff, and give him six months and then give him probation, let him out, because you know damn well they're within an hour they're back on the street doing it again. Yeah. Um, these kids, they're picked up. Yep. Uh, with drugs and guns. Yep. And you go in front of the judge, and the judge says. Uh, restricted to uh, home, home. You're going under home arrest uh, for 20 days, and uh, you must um, submit to a drug test every day or something. And that's it. That's like the kids saying, "Oh, what was it the briar rabbit saying? Oh, please don't throw me in the briar patch." Yeah. I mean, <laughs> you you can't. That's not a punishment. It, it, you're right, <clears throat> and we're closing down prisons. We should be building prisons. Well, we don't have a, number one, we've never had a, we haven't lately have a uh, appetite for punishment. Now we don't have an appetite for re even restriction. Now, the latest thing you saw in Massachusetts, they want to excuse 18-year-olds as an adult on a lot of crimes. Yeah. Now make it 19 or 20. Well, yeah. we got some out there that want a 25. But by the same token, yeah. the same idiots, yep. Governor uh, Senator Warren. Yep, she's one of them. She wants 
14 year olds to be able to vote. Yeah, but you don't want to punish even 20 year olds. Yeah. I mean, well, he's still a child. His yep. brain is still forming. I know. So a 14-year-old is in the same situation? You know, if you eliminate every politician <coughs> yeah. that lives in a paradox, you wouldn't have any politicians left. <laughs> they're, all, they're all paradoxical. They're all, they always, they're, their life is split like negative, positive. Yeah. Plus, minus. Up, and they uh, don't see that everything is canceling out each other. Because they're opportunists. That's right. They want to say what you want to hear, and you're going to look at them favorably. And the biggest question they have to answer every day is, which way is the wind blowing? Yeah. How many votes am I going to get? Yeah. Yep. I, I, my biggest thing right now is term limits yeah. on everything. It will never, ever happen. It won't, because it... <laughs> It's to their, it's the lawmaker's benefit not to allow term limits. That's right. And they, they will they never. Not because they terminate if, their own their own source. If a citizen put that law in the hopper, yep. it would never, never come see out the light of, of the day. hopper. No. You know what they do? They go, um, the speaker takes it and sends it to the state. Study committee. And he buries it in committee, yep. I call it. And the study yep. committee is where all bills go to, to die. die. Yeah. That's right. Now, here's the next one is another, this is what we should do, but <clears throat> rebuild our cities, make clean, safe, and beautiful again. Make them clean, safe, and beautiful again. You know what? Boy, that's, I'm 100% in favor of it. How the hell do we do it? I don't know. We got I a, don't know either. We've got a ferry with a wand and pew, I guess. The, and his? Yeah, but wh who would be against that? Mm. You know? <laughs> it's like saying, I want to live in Eden. You know? It, yeah, everybody says yes. But yet, who does this hurt? It hurts the manual laborers. The, the low end of the financial scale. Yeah, you, uh, we're you, living, all right, it's a little three bedroom apartment, mm -hmm. but it's ours and we're living in it, and we're surviving, and we're both working and we're trying to get a better life. If you're going to knock down all these houses in the south end of uh, Boston yeah. and put up mega buildings, where the hell do we go? That, well, that's true. Yeah. There's, there's so many problems, but on paper, uh, the content of that statement is beautiful. It is. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I mean, it's yep. just, it, but it's a fairy tale. Yeah, it is. Uh, or the guy that can solve this can walk on water, too. Yeah, well, he would be able to, be able to fly and everything else. Strengthen and modernize our military, making it the strongest, most powerful in the world. No problem at all. No problem at all it is right. Keep the U.S. dollar as the world's reserve currency. Yeah. Yep. It's probably the most stable, one of the most stable currencies it is. out there. Fight for and protect Social Security and Medicare with no cuts, including no changes to retirement ages. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's the end of that. Yeah, so I, I think no no cuts in benefits, no cuts in. No, um, I don't think there should be any cuts, but I also think that uh, there are certain areas that if if it becomes an issue, financial issue, it's it is change, it's treatable, it is curable, it is on Medicare, it, and it's things that don't really mean much. You can change it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, now, I, I see. I I don't think that you should be raising the retirement age. Right. Because it's not the fact that somebody's going to live longer, but if you worked all your life and you say, well, usually the people used to die at 68 or 70. Right. And so they retire at 65. But that's not, that shouldn't be our goal. Our goal should be able to, if you want to retire at 55 and enjoy life at that point, that should be a benefit of exactly. living in this country. Exactly. So I, I don't think they should do it that way. But I can do. I can see 
it is absolutely ludicrous to cut off paying into Social Security at the high, way high end. Yeah. Well, at that point, you don't care about that at all anywhere. No. So what the hell's the difference? Yeah, I mean, to limit, uh, I think, uh, what is it now? It's around well, 165 well, yeah. or 180,000. It used to be 140 000. or something. Like yeah. I mean, why isn't it 500,000? Or oh, why isn't it a million? Okay, they can afford it. That's right. A millionaire can afford another Use six Use that and to, a half to allow percent. somebody to enjoy his retirement exactly. at 55. Exactly. Exactly, and it's relatively painless. That's right, it is, because yeah. the people that are contributing to that, they don't care. No. It doesn't matter to them. But it, what it does is, it saves Social Security. That's right. And these bums, it, well, I tell you what though, again, money is the mother's milk of politics. All right, and if they want to get the big contributors to contribute to their election committee well can't go raising taxes on them nope oh no but somebody's got to come along and do it um cancel ev mandates and cut costly and burdensome regulations i think EV and those kind of things, let the market decide on that. Exactly. You cannot force that kind of thing. Well, you could, but you can't force it smoothly right. or without creating chaos and, and hardship. Now, these electric cars, yep. if you take a look at the families that buy them, they're a third car. Yeah, oh, they're, yeah, yeah, they're so, for Junior, or they're for little Anne Marie. And, so she um, could pull in into the country club school. for for brunch, and everybody said, oh, she got a, you have a new Mercedes electric. Oh, isn't that wonderful? Yeah. And she says, yes, well, I love it. I love When oh, I go to the market, so nice. I can see it. And, I, and it is so good for the planet. Yeah, so that's right. Yeah. And yet, those are the people that can afford to buy those cars. That's right. So we, we are the taxpayers, it. have to kick in 7500 bucks every time one of them is sold. Not only that, there's a secondary phase to that. Every time that car runs down the road and wears out the road, they're not paying any gas tax. That's on right. It. No highway so tax. So no, no money to keep the roads Road's going. Under, uh, proper repair, except... <laughs> Suck a crane and suck a voice. They're yep. keeping to pay it. That's right. End federal funding for any school pushing critical race theory, radical gender ideology, and other inappropriate racial, sexual, or political content on our children. I have no problem with that. None whatsoever. I don't think school should be in that business anyway. That's right. Absolutely. Teach what and you're supposed to be teaching and shut your mouth. There. You uh, it's, You know, this brainwave running back and <laughs> forth. Because that's exactly what I was going to yeah. say. And if you don't like it, shut up. That's right. Sick and tired of this Get your soapbox after school and stand out front on the road and... and preach whatever yeah. you want to do that's okay just yeah. don't do it on school property right and don't do it school time and don't indoctrinate your kids nope. either i don't like that 17 keep men out of women's sports absolutely absolutely deport pro hamas radicals and make our college campuses safe and patriotic again no problem can you imagine could you now let's go let's drop back 10 years can you imagine jewish kids at harvard being afraid of being assaulted for the sin of being jewish i can imagine it absolutely i can imagine it you can imagine that happening 10 20 years ago oh 20 years no no, that's what I'm oh, saying. Today. Oh, absolutely. Let's today. go back in oh, time. Okay, okay. I, did, I missed that yeah. part. No, um, no, no it, it, was, it was different. It was and totally on different. And Fridays, they wear the little beanie, the, the yarmulke. Yeah. yeah. Um, and they take their life in their hands walking down do the street. Now. Yeah. I mean, well, you know, what the hell kind of a country have we become? 
Harvard went from very discriminatory to non to very non-discriminatory back to a type of discrimination again because don't forget there are two schools here that exist because of Harvard's discriminatory entry point. Number one is BC. They never would not let Catholics into Harvard for a while. We're talking huh? we're talking seventeen hundred. We're talking back talking even even before Bill's time here. Yes. Um, well we're still talking though the uh, the uh, the beginning of the nineteenth uh, 1900s or so. Yeah, I yeah mean, exactly. Uh, but and, Brandeis and, is the other one. And 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 to, uh, one other point too. Uh, Jews could not belong to country clubs. That's right. In Boston. Well, Brandeis University yeah. was used to be called originally was the Jewish Harvard. Yeah. Because they could not let well, they would not let them into Harvard. Yeah. But today Harvard does not want to hear that. They just kind of eh, 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 not us. Our kids, our kids out here, they're, they're mad, they're angry, yep. and me. Go out and slap their asses. Harvard is very, very much overrated. Yeah. We, we give Harvard so much credit for so much stuff that it doesn't, that it doesn't deserve. No, you know, if, if you have the money to go to Harvard and the, the you're able to get in, after your four years, you're set for life. You can go any place. Because of that, that diploma opens every single door. Not and because the education is that much right. better, but because psychologically, it's people say, "Oh, it went to Harvard." Now there is a big advantage of going to Harvard, and that's context. Con I was going to say connections. Connections. Same, same difference. Thing. You know, yeah. chances are you're going to associate with somebody that's got big money, big influence, someplace, and become friends with them, and uh, you get pulled along with that. That you find more than going to UMass Amherst. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean. Um, but far as the education goes, any better. Yeah. I mean, when you're in business and you're in your forties, um, you're established, and uh, you say to yourself, uh, "I need some help on this." You know, George was uh, in my class at Harvard, and he's over at such and such a company mm -hmm. uh, let me give him a call and it's they connect yeah and if you graduated from the University of Kansas and you are in this situation here in Massachusetts you'd be going blah, 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 yeah, you wouldn't know where yeah. to start you would have no yeah. contact so that's but that's the very that's the most important part of having yeah. a sheep uh, a um, diploma from Harvard that's right yeah um, Secure our elections, including same-day voting, voter IDs, paper ballots, and proof of citizenship. Okay, now, I'm going to pick one part out of that that I, okay. I absolutely agree and have advocated for, for since I was, I don't know, at least a week now. <laughs> um, that's national ID. We're one of the few countries in the world that does not have a national ID. We rely on a stupid driver's license. You've got 50 states, plus you've got Puerto Rico, plus you've got Guam, you've got all the uh, American uh, Virgin Islands. Yeah. You know, you got a mishmash all over the place. Uh, we, a national ID yep. is mandatory. Yep. Now, you, you take some of these poor guys that are working in bars or restaurants, where there's a lot of internet or, or a lot of interstate people coming in, I mean, the kids hauling the guy, the bartender, a, a Kansas driver's license. He doesn't know what the hell a Kansas driver's he license. He doesn't even know what like. Kansas is. He, that's right. He doesn't <laughs> even know where Kansas is. So it, it's it's moot. It's stupid to not have a, a national license, a national ID, and have that as your proof of citizenship. Yep. That exactly. Yeah. Um, I I. I I bit. totally agree with this. Ten. Ten. Okay. And, and um, once you got a national ID card, then you can take whatever you want in it as an ID to prove who you are yeah. and what your status is. But until that point, you're just yeah. pooping mm, in a wind here. Now, one thing I um, disagree with, uh, same-day voting. 
there are shut-ins. Yeah. And there are people that have absentee ballots, and you should count them for for five extra days or something. I I, I have no problem with mail-in ballots, none whatsoever. I have a big problem. I mean, Not when me you either. get a stack like this um, from one precinct, that's, and that's every a single vote is for one individual. That that's a that's an individual. That's a problem that can be solved. I'm only talking about the principle of oh, all right. of mail-in ballots. You get a a shut-in, as you call them, or an old person, and that election's in November, and it's snowing, and they they're not going out like you and I. Yeah, I'm not going out, <laughs> but. And I've signed up for the last yeah. election now. You get a thing in the mail, you get yeah. it, it's all official, you write it, you put it back, and it's all, boom, I'm done. And I vote. So I, I think we should vote as conveniently as possible. Not this thing where you should go out and stand in line, some places stand in line for hours. We don't, see, we don't see that here either. Right. We don't see l l people lined up down the block. Right. Now, a lot of European countries vote on Sunday. Yeah. Is that a good idea? Yeah. Yeah. I wouldn't object to that at I all. I wouldn't either. I mean, you've got an, uh, an hour to go to church. Yeah. All right, or whatever. Um, so the rest of the Sunday is uh, watching the football games yeah. or wrestling with the kids or mowing the lawn or whatever. I, I don't no see that. any problem with that mm -hmm. at all. Uh, and, but it's been fought. Um, good. All right. Unite, number 20, last one. Unite our country, bringing it to new and record levels of success. That's like the fairy, talent, fairy yeah. tale towns. You know? yeah. <laughs> of course, who is not going to agree with that? that, that that's Vanilla ice yeah. cream, the American flag, and mm -hmm. everything else. Apple pie yeah, and, and that's, and that's and great. Yeah, that's fine. So, addendum. We do have a couple of addendums. When Americans are united, confident, and committed to our principles, we will never fail. That sounds good. Sounds good. Yeah. It, it might and, not be true, but it sounds and good. And it certainly is something to set your sail by. Mm-hmm. Today and together, with love for our country, faith in our people, and trust in God's good grace, we will make America great again. Yeah. So that's another one that... Yep. And one other uh, thing I threw in, my extra. The critical race theory that I mentioned earlier. Mm-hmm. Uh, for you folks who are not sure what the critical race theory is, uh, it's a set of ideas holding that racial bias is inherent in many parts of Western society, especially in legal and social institutions, on the basis of there having been primarily designated or designed designed for and incorporated by white people. Yeah, I was wondering when you get to the key word that that's what that basically means. Mm. So basically what it's saying is that all whites are racist. Yeah. They don't realize it, but they no. are. But when we were building a country and we were just all white people, who the hell was going to help us? Well, yeah. That, well, that's so it was done by white people. But the fact is that, that that is so that critical race theory is so self-serving. If you think about it, yeah. it's like saying, "Well, you're all bad, but I'm good," mm -hmm. or "I'm a victim." Let's say good, but I'm a victim. And it's they're very good at playing the victim. Today, the victim is the hero. But nobody is all bad or all good. There's no such thing as every race is racist all races are racist to some point of course they are. you cannot eliminate that i don't care if you're black blue green yellow or red you have a you have a racial bias in, in you 
you might not like, or you have biases in you to start with. You might not like potatoes. You might not like peas. You know, you got, you got, I don't like living down south because it's too damn hot. I don't like living up north because it's too cold. I don't like Fords. One broke down. Yeah, that's right. I hate Fords. Yeah. Um, but you, every, that's human nature. Of course it is. And human nature has a tendency to not be comfortable with the unfamiliar. If you're unfamiliar with something, you're uncomfortable with it. You're uncomfortable with your own or what you're familiar with. Now, the fact that blacks tend to live in, now they, I, know they're, I know what they're gonna say too, in a, in a black area, Chinese, you got Chinatown, you got the Italian section, you got little German, you got Germantown, you got little Italy. People tend to be comfortable around things they are familiar with. That is not necessarily bad. So exactly. it's, it's not being racial, it's being comfortable with your own existence. To, I've had people, minorities say to me, I want to be with my people. Classic case is Judge Garrity and his busing. Yep. When we first moved here. And it was a, on paper, it was an idea. Had probably had some merit, I don't know. And it was supported by, by the minority community. It wasn't long where they wanted to go back to their neighborhood schools. We don't want to be going all across town right. to a, to a, a almost all white school. We want to go back to my own neighborhood. I don't care if it was all black. I don't want my kids spending an hour and 20 minutes getting to the school in the morning. And they're not comfortable with the white kids. Yeah. So are they racially biased? Yeah, technically they are. Tool. But you know what? But because we expect... Is it bad? No. No. When we exp uh, exclaim a preference, does yeah. that mean that we're biased? Yeah, it does. It does. Bias simply means you yeah. are... But, but it's not, not wrong. Not in the evil sense no, of bias. No, it's not a bad... No. It's not bad. you got no. a bias. Everybody's got biases. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, exactly. I mean, if I decided... Or you went to a restaurant and you had no bias, instead of the way she, what do you want? I don't care. Yeah. Please bring me something. I don't yeah. I have no preference. Yeah. Well, what's yeah. good? You yeah. know, yeah. Bring you me didn't even care that. if it's good. Yeah. Just bring me something. Yeah. Um, no, I... Uh, man, alive. This has been a wonderful uh, session here today. I feel like this, you should have took the uh, philosophy courses that I took. Yeah. That's what these were. They're, they're just like... Oh, this guy was really off the wall, but he was so interesting. It, yeah, it, it's great to be able to have a discussion without it turning into anger. Yeah, and too often we end up screaming at one another, or, or to express an opinion that you know is going to be contrary to the other guy, mm. but he'll sit and listen to you. Mm. Yeah, exactly. All right. Well, listen, um, this has been a sensational uh, get-together here. Um, and I must say, uh, why don't we plan on doing it in about two more well, weeks? Thanks for not throwing stuff at the TV. We, uh, <laughs> we didn't have to dodge and weave this time. Uh, so take care, everybody. All right. Stay cool. Folks, uh, enjoy summer uh, and stay cool is right. <laughs>